Jess from Design School. For those who haven't met me before, I'm thrilled to have you live here in the session with us today. Clayton is going to be taking us through today's session, so I'll hand over to you, Clayton. Hello, everyone. Before we kick off this webinar today, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land that I am presenting from today, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. I pay my respects to elders past, present and future. Fantastic. So today is a very, very exciting workshop and we'll be covering off how to accelerate your social media content creation. So kia ora everyone. No mai haere mai. Ki tenei whare a Canva i tenei rā. Ka hui hui mai nei rā. Ko Clayton taku ingoa. Welcome to the workshop today. I am Clayton and I'm from Canva and I'm part of the Canva for Enterprise team. I look after our sales enablement program. Before that, I was a customer success manager working with a whole bunch of our enterprise customers across the globe from large organizations with over 5,000 employees using Canva through to smaller enterprises who are rolling out their first design tool for their team. But before we get started, what is Canva for those newbies on the call? The Canva is a free tool and you can access it by going to canva.com. You don't even have to sign in to actually start designing, which is great. And today I'm going to talk you through the Teams and Enterprise product. Now there's different subscriptions available, but if you go to canva.com forward slash pricing, you can see our three tiers that we have. And remember, if you're a not-for-profit, Canva is completely free for you to use and you get all the access to all the different pro features. Canva is more than just a product or a company with a very ambitious mission to empower the world to design. We're doing okay so far with over 55 million monthly active users going onto Canva, creating content every single month, and we're doubling in size every year. We're available in every country and available in over 100 languages as well. But as our founder, Mel says, we're only 1% of the way there, and you guys are that 1%, and I can't wait to see all the cool content that you guys create. So in this session, what we'll be doing is we'll be covering off industry insights. So we'll run through some basic social media stats. We'll talk about how to make it engaging. And we'll be hearing from our friends at The Daily Oz, which is a startup news organization here in Australia that's purely social. And that's a really, really cool and interesting interview. And I feel like everyone watching on this call will take a lot away from it. We'll talk about how you can save time with Canva, so how you can be more productive. Then we'll cover off resources and places that you can go find more information after this call. So let's get excited about some stats. Put on your statistics hat. My name is Professor Clayton and I'll be your statistics teacher today. Get ready to be blown away. There's 3.96 billion social media users across the globe, which equates to about 48% of the population. So I was blown away by two things. It's nearly 50% of people around the world using social media, but also that the world is now at 7.6 billion people. Last time I checked, it was 6 billion. So very exciting. The average person has 8.6 social media accounts. The social media accounts aren't just your Facebook or Instagram. With this particular stat, WhatsApp kind of falls into this and so does Gmail and, and a whole bunch of other tools that facilitate social conversations. On average, we spend around two hours and 45 minutes on social media every day. This is a scary stat, but I can definitely say that I do that, whether I'm scrolling through Instagram or trying to become TikTok famous. Either way, everyone is using it a lot. And it's been on the rise since 2015. So social media, as you can see here, has increased year on year in regards to users. And it's definitely the platform that gives us the most reach when we're speaking to our viewers, our customers, our consumers. Now that you're all certified in Stats 101, I want to take you through some steps on how to actually make your social media content really engaging. So considering that there's four, sorry, billion people using social media, and they all have eight accounts each, your content needs to be dynamic and needs to reach across multiple platforms and needs to be engaging and needs to be functional. And there's a whole bunch of ways that Canva can help facilitate that. So my friends, 
how do you effectively accelerate the content creation process? We're going to hear from the daily Oz who have cracked it in creating social content. And there's a whole bunch of reasons why, but just to give you a bit of background, the daily Oz is an Australian startup. They are a news organization and they have over 200,000 followers on their Instagram account. The cool thing about the daily Oz though, is that they are a purely social news platform. So all of their content is posted on Instagram for their viewers to consume. I'm going to mute myself and we'll watch the recording and then we'll come back to some more tips and tricks on how to create social content on Canva. So I've got Sam here and Zara here from The Daily Oz. Sam, did you want to quickly introduce yourself? Yeah, my name's Sam. I'm the co-founder of The Daily Oz, which is a social first news platform aimed at getting people to read the news if they're not natural news readers. Love it. Zara? I am Zara Seidler. I'm the other co-founder. I am 24. I have a background in politics and now I have the privilege of doing The Daily Oz every day and I love every second of it. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys, for jumping on this quick interview today. Uh, really appreciate your time. Super exciting, fantastic little startup, um, but they're doing some big stuff here in Australia. Um, and they're going to be speaking to us today about how they use Canva to be more productive. Everything that they're doing on social media is made through Canva, um, and we'll be getting some inside tips and tricks from them. So hello, Sam. Hello, Zara. Thanks for being with me today. I think we'll kick it off with the hardest question. And remember, everyone, I am speaking to two journos here. <laughs> what does a normal workday look like for you? Zara, did you want to um, take it away there? Absolutely. What we want it to look like and what it does look like are two very different things. But at the moment, as you alluded to, we are quite a small team, which means that Sam and I are all hands on deck at all times of the day. So we kick off around 6 a.m. and that's when we get our newsletter and our podcast out for the day. So that wraps up the day's news. And then we start on our five stories that go up on Instagram story. So jot those into Canva, get them up by 8 a.m. And then we start on all our posts for the day. So I'll be bashing out something on Canva, then Sam will be editing over it and we'll try get out six pieces a day before we do it all again the next day. So finish up around nine or 10 at night and then wake up bright and early to do it all again. Lots of fun. Sam, is there, is there anything you'd like to add to that very busy day that you have already? I like to try and get outside once, but no, it's it's like, a you know, the, the joy of the news cycle is that it never does stop. And equally, though, it doesn't matter if we're on a walk because we can quickly do something up on our phones and we're pretty Which mobile. Happened this morning. That Which happened, happened this morning. morning. Yeah. We were on a walk and we saw Victoria's COVID numbers and we stopped, sat on our phones on Canva, did it, kept walking. So, <laughs> there you That's go. absolutely fantastic. And I, I think it, it's really interesting, um, especially when speaking to media customers around like timeliness of posts and, and, and speed to design and then speed to market or speed to audience. Um, it'll be really interesting to hear from you guys how you kind of plan out your day around those additional like news items that do pop up. Um, is there some sort of contingency plan in, in place for you guys to get that kind of content out? We always give each other the heads up if one of us are going to be properly offline for a little while. So the other person knows to keep their ear to the ground in case something big happens. But because of the way that we've set up our workflows, it's all really easy to execute quickly. The thing that is most dangerous when working quickly in journalism is getting stuff wrong and the actual facts, getting something verified or, you know, trying to strike that balance between being the first to market with the information and being right. Uh, and often those two are not conducive to each other but from a kind of mechanics and design perspective it's really really seamless to work quick if you've got all the right templates and everything set up do you think that productivity and being quick can be in the same sentence yes i'm just going to jump in there and answer <laughs> i think that um, we have set up productive processes like what sam alluded to with these templates so we know every day that at 11 a.m our premier is getting up to announce covid numbers we have got all of the templates set up with all of the key information sitting on canva that means that once that tweet is out once that press conference has started we are usually one of the first movers in announcing those numbers so i think that when you have 
set up productive workflows and productive processes, it means that you can move really quickly, efficiently and accurately, which is really important to us. Yeah, that's great. And so just on that whole productivity thing, um, you, you mentioned that you're using templates at the moment. What other tools uh, or features within Canva are you using to help you be more productive? We spend a lot of time on the mobile app and whether that's, you know, I, I guess every single process ends with the mobile app because we need it to upload onto Instagram from our phones. Um, we don't use any scheduling software or anything because all of it's done live. But then, you know, we've got a really strong brand guide that's set up in Canva with all our fonts, colors, images, all that kind of thing ready there and good to go. Um, we lean really heavily on the image library within Canva, um, especially for young publishers Images can be really expensive when we do things properly and get it all licensed and everything. So the, it's just massive amounts of resources within Canva that we use a lot. And then otherwise, we do a lot of the collaboration stuff. So we'll all log on from different accounts and kind of cast our eye over the same designs or jump in there all at once. There's been particularly hectic press conferences recently, especially with developments with COVID, where three of us have been in the same design at once. Um, I've been working on the front graphics. Zara has been in there making sure that all the reasons to leave home restrictions are written up and somebody else has been in there getting a quote. So it's a pretty awesome feeling when we can work on three slides between three people and get it all together in under a minute or so. And I'll just add to that. Uh, one of, I mean, I have two favorite tools. I don't know if that's a question you asked, but that's a question I'll answer. Um, Removing the background is possibly the best thing to ever happen to a non-graphic designer because it makes everything look really legit and it's become part of our style guide. Um, and it's just one button now. It's unbelievable. And the other thing is that when one of our writers or journos are in their writing, I, as the editor, can leave comments so they can see my feedback in real time, which has become just a really vital tool for, again, making those workflows more efficient and so that we don't have to jump on a call or write a text to each other, that it's there, she knows which part of the text I'm referring to and can respond straight away. So as the person that does a lot of the editing, that's been such a useful tool for me to use. Yeah, that's great to hear. That was my next question. What is your favourite feature on Canva? And it sounds like it's everyone's crowd favourite, the uh, background remover. It's very magic. Um, often when I'm speaking to clients about it, it's like my little hey, look at this, watch me do some magic. So um, it's great to hear that you guys are loving it too. So I think if we just take off the journo hat for a second and then put on like your everyday consumer hat, you know, when you're you're out and about um, not being a journo and I know it doesn't stop often, but what would you recommend and, and what do you think run of the mill businesses? So anything other than how often should they be posting on social media and engaging their audience? So the general best practice guidelines throughout the last few years with social media has always been that you should always be posting when you've got something to say and at a very minimum posting two times a week. So the baseline, let's say a stall at a market, I would say would be two days a week. And the way that we've always thought about it would be that you'd post one time to say when the market's on and one time to say how good it was that you were there. And so that's kind of the structure. But then if you've got something to say, you just got to keep going. The one thing that I see a lot of businesses do on social media really effectively is form habits. And I think that's the most powerful way to think about posting on social media is if you know that you're giving a wellness tip to your followers every Friday afternoon and you're a juice brand, then that's something that they're going to get used to as well. People respond really well to structures in their day around social media, but more so the platforms respond really well to when you implement a habit into the posting and they know algorithmically to expect a post from you on Friday afternoon and they'll treat it more favorably. So it's important to be consistent. The other big point I'd make is that you shouldn't really try anything for shorter than three months. Just like if you know that you want to put up memes because you want to engage with your followers that way, give it a go for a long time and then sit down and look at the results because it's too sporadic if you try it once or twice and then try and see how it's going. That's interesting. Do you do any experimentation with your posts? <laughs> do we? Yes. This We are both quit our full-time jobs in February of this year and the remainder of the year has been just experimenting. Um, but what Sam's talking about is also something that we grapple with because we see lots of different media companies 
uh, not naming any names, but posting, you know, 30, 40, 50 times in two days. And so we have to straddle the idea of do we want to uh, algorithmically privilege ourselves by posting a lot and having that favorably looked upon, or do we want to be putting out quality content when there is something to say and we have always fallen back on we want everything there to be a value add and we won't put up something if it isn't but it's certainly enticing when you see these other pages growing exponentially and it's because they're posting so many different things Um, so it's definitely something that we have experimented with you know a few more posts a few less posts but I think we've uh, settled in the sweet spot where we're at currently thanks to a whole bunch of COVID news. Yeah maybe the only positive thing coming out of COVID is supporting the Daily Oz. So your brand is relatively young um, and you're up against some big dogs in the news industry. Your focus is mainly on Instagram and and keeping that in mind, how important is it that your brand is maintained within those Instagram posts? How do you do it? Like, How do you maintain brand consistency? And overall, do you find that being consistent with your brand aids in building brand awareness? Bam, 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 lots of questions there. (laughs) Definitely. So brand identity and brand awareness is everything for us. It's our main way of marketing ourselves. We don't spend money on paid marketing very often. Um, So we rely on being natively shared and our readers being our champions. We're often referred to, before people know who we are, people will say, are you guys that bright colored news page? Um, And so we are really conscious of using the same four colors. We only have four and that's, we don't stray from that at all. The same font, we don't even have an A and a B font, we've just got the one font. It's in line with our ideology about the news is that you need to understand the base level of facts before you can build on that. And so we don't want to make it any more complicated than it needs to be to look at, let alone to understand. In terms of the power of branding through design, one thing that we do that's really effective is that we embed our logo in the image of everything we do. And we know that people screenshot a lot of stuff on social media, that's just kind of how millennials and Gen Zs and anyone really behaves. So we need to make sure that our brand is able to shine through if it's not shared through the tools that Instagram provides, but even just a lazy screenshot. And the way that we do that is make sure that you see the TDA cup wherever you're seeing information that we write. So whether that's on you know a random slide in the middle of a piece or on a story that we share or a post, it's always there. Anything to add to that one, Zara? I think that um, it's really clear to our audience how much we have privileged our design over a lot of other things because we'll often get comments saying, how did you get this looking so aesthetically pleasing in such a short amount of time? And we're like, yes, job well done. So we will never sacrifice our branding. And um, I think Sam has really hit the nail on the head there that the news is noisy enough and we don't need to make it more noisy with, you know, conflicting fonts and 100 images and fancy words because that's what everyone else is doing when we're trying to change that game. Awesome. It's super interesting and slightly uh, off topic. How did you guys come up with your brand? I um I was I was traveling on my gap year seven years ago and needed something on social media to fill me in on the headlines, but didn't have enough data to scroll on news websites. And there just wasn't anything. There wasn't anything on social media that you could actually read what you needed to know inside social media. Everything was about linking you out to another page. So I thought it would be a cool idea. And then I didn't want to do it by myself. So I wrote on LinkedIn um, that I would like to do it with someone. Zara responded, we went for a coffee and that was four years ago. (laughs) And here we are. (laughs) That's such a cool story. Which kind of leads nicely on to how do you make those social posts engaging? How do you make them interactive? How do you get your audience to want to continue reading? We go back to the core pillars of who we are as a brand and that's simplicity and clarity and transparency, those kind of key ideas. One thing that we're always thinking about is that phones are quite are still quite small. Um, and so it's really important not to jam pack our slides with too much. We've got a minimum font size that we know that we can never cross. And we would rather do one big hero image than a couple of smaller images. And all of that just goes to the exactly same idea of you've got six seconds to engage somebody. They're standing on a bus um, because all the seats are taken and they're flicking through their phone and we're about to hit them with an explainer on what interest rates are. 
you want to make that information shine as much as possible because the odds are stacked against you that they're just going to flick past it. And what we find time and time again is that less is more. So if it means that we're doing you know, a headline with less words than we could, then we'll pick that option. And on the interactive side, we always talk about the fact that we're in a constant feedback loop with our audience. Because we are social first, it means that we can really interact with them on a level that other news outlets might not be able to. So if we put up a story, say, in the morning about a defamation case, for example, we can then also put a poll on there and actually understand a bit more about how our audience is interacting with feeling, thinking about a certain issue. And that's been really valuable for us because we then get insight into our audience, but it also means that they have buy-in into these topics and these ideas. So we're always trying to interact with them, whether it's a sassy uh, comment on, I don't know, Sam just goes rogue on those ones, or it is, um, you know, a survey or a funny caption. It, we're just trying to really make it as accessible as possible. And that's leaning into the fact that we are a 24 and 26 year old and we're not old people trying to pretend to interact with young people. We're young people talking to our mates. So we try to lean, lean into that as much as we can. Mm. How do you foster that two-way communication with your audience at scale? We make it really clear to them that we want their input. So we, um, you know, something as simple as at the end of a podcast episode, when we're signing off, we do a daily podcast and quite often we'll sign off by saying, let us know what you think about what we've discussed today. Um, you know, hit us up in our DMs and tell us what you think about the Olympics and whether that should be going ahead because of COVID in Japan. So explicitly asking for that audience interaction is really important. But then also, despite our size, always making sure we reply to everyone in our DMs. And if somebody's got a question around they're not understanding the border restrictions and they don't know whether they can see their boyfriend in Adelaide, um, that's somebody asking us because they really trust us and rely on us. So we, despite the fact that we've got over 140,000 followers, um, it's really important that we still answer everyone. And I think the way that we maintain that while scaling is that it just needs to remain a fundamental core part of our business. Just the same as we are meticulous with any other part of it, this is really important to our community and we want to create a really loyal and engaged community. And that means that we do need to get back to them. So as we grow our team, that will always remain essential. And it means that everyone is across how we respond, how we speak, what the language we use is, and that various team members can do the same thing and that that will grow as the team grows. Cool. How many people are on your team? We've got a core team of four. Yeah. Um, and then we've got a few part-timers and casuals floating around as well. And they're all involved in the whole social media sites of content creation on Canva? Yeah, everybody everybody in the team knows their way around Canva. Everyone's got a, a login. But we use Canva for all parts of the business. So if we're doing a pitch deck to prospective investors, we'll do all of that in Canva as well. Or if we're doing an ad campaign, we'll design the ad in Canva. So it's really... For us, or it's a rate a bit, card. Yeah, anything. yeah, it's kind of a document hub um, as much as anything. Well, that's really cool. So you're using it almost as like a like an asset management tool as well. Definitely, definitely, Completely. yeah. Um, you know, we track our growth through putting all the data into the graph function on Canva and what like watching that line going up. Um, <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's a really, really strong part of how we work. Well, I was going to ask about your tech stack, but it sounds like that Canva is the tech stack. But um, what other tools are you using to be successful on social media? As Sam said, every piece of output that either goes onto social media or to our investors uh, or to our broader team, you know, updates, any of that, it is all through Canva. So even, you know, our podcast artwork is on Canva. Um there is literally nothing we don't do on Canva showing how reliant we are yeah. on your platform. <laughs> but one of the interesting things that we are um, thinking about when we're recruiting new people is that making sure that nobody's scared of getting in there and designing mm. because it's not one of those things that we want um, for there to be a vacuum of who can do it. And it has to wait until mm. Sam and Zara have nothing on their plate for it to get done. Um, everyone 
needs to be able to get to work around all our existing designs and not, not be afraid to make their, their new ones and have fun. I'm evidence of that. I mean, Sam was the Canva pro at the beginning and then he just had to upskill me via necessity. And now we, yeah, when a team member comes on, that is part of their training. They, they need to be Canva proficient for our workflow to actually work. It's been a nice little teaching teaching the newcomers all the tricks of the trade and everyone gets really excited by the remove background feature. But <laughs> it's, as Sam has said on a previous occasion, it's really fundamental to how journalism will look in the future in that you do have to be multi-skilled and not just be an epic writer, but you have to be able to create that content that is going to be engaging on the social media, which is the way of the future, at least what we're thinking is the way of the future. Yeah. We've only got a few more minutes left, but I'd love to hear really quickly from you guys how you actually go about upskilling your team to create that really interactive and engaging social content. And then finally, any tips and tricks that you would like to share with the team um, to be more productive in their creation of social media content? So how we upskill the team, um, I think on a really basic level, it's things like sharing a screen um, over, I mean, at the moment when we're all remotely sharing a screen over Google Meets and um, talking through the process of actually getting something done. Um, when we're back in the office, that will happen, you know, over a laptop together. Um, but going slow and showing the kind of steps that it takes to get to the final destination um, and then making sure that they get their heads around even things like how we name different files in Canva um, so that they know which ones to replicate and make a copy of so that most of the design aspects are there already. We did um, learn that one the hard way uh, three years in when we realised we weren't naming anything and then trying to go copy back on and copy find of, copy of 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 times infinity. <laughs> yeah, so now we, now we definitely name everything. We do. And my tip for being productive on social media is that the 15 minutes after you post something are the most important 15 minutes to engage with the community that's engaging with the post. You're going to get a lot more bang for buck out of your post in terms of its reach and in terms of how many eyeballs see it if you're responsive to your community straight after and you're ready to answer questions in the comments that might you might need to clarify something or um, even like clear up any spam comments, you know, just kind of hygiene of the posts are really important. Just on the how we upskill, because we use the same templates, we've got thousands and thousands of posts that are in Canva. So when we are upskilling a new recruit, it's very easy to point to three years or four years of history of how those posts have looked and how they've evolved so that they're very quickly aware of our design, our feel, our tone and all of that. So there is this really rich um, context that they're being thrown into. And, I mean, we don't need to tell you that using Canva is just so easy that it means that there are really no limitations to for them to produce the content. It usually won't take more than a couple of days for them to be at the stage that they can then throw that up on social media and feel really confident that it's at a high quality. That's great fastest time it's ever taken you to create a social post uh, a minute probably uh, under a minute I under a minute 40 seconds yeah your coolest social post that you've ever created ash ash Barty winning wimbledon yeah a big hero post ash in the middle of the tile just in all her glory um i'm gonna okay. nerd out mine was explaining the cross bench because people just really engaged with it and it was making politics sexy and i thought that was pretty cool and finally post with the most engagement ever in the world it actually was one of our earliest ones um, that went viral and somehow still gets traction uh, and it was at the peak of the Black Lives Matter movement last year. And it was a really simple tile with the headline of, if you care about racism in America, you should care about racism in Australia. Um, and it was right at the beginning of Australians thinking about racism here at home and how the Black Lives Matter movement was spreading globally. Um, and it literally was plain purple with big text and an Indigenous flag. 
How good. Super powerful stuff there yeah. as well. That's awesome. Well, how good. Thank you so much, uh, Sam and Zara, for joining me today. It was absolutely fantastic speaking to you both. Uh, you're obviously doing something right um, with 142,000 followers on Instagram. Um, and I think the wealth of knowledge that uh, we've uncovered today and being shared with the audience watching will definitely help them in um, all their social content creation endeavours. Um, so really appreciate your time today. Later. Thank you so much. See you later. That was uh, absolutely fantastic. And that interviewer, what a legend. He's just so cool. I hope all our viewers took a lot away from that. I think something that really resonated with me and I thought was really interesting was the engagement with your users 15 minutes after you make that social post. Now, obviously, each industry is different, but for news, it's really important. And especially for the Daily Oz, where they're speaking to a truly social audience, almost humanizing your brand and in communicating with your followers is really important. I think that's something that I definitely took away from that interview. Next up is how to save time using Canva in your social media creation. So we're going to go over three top tips that bolster your activity on your social media channels. So tip number one is visuals dominate social media. So when I say visual, I mean imagery, videos, even audio as well. Creating a dynamic post is far more engaging than a post with just text on it. With Canva Pro and Canva for Enterprise, you get access to over 100 million stock photos, videos and audio, as well as elements. And there's so much that during our demo, which will be in a short while, we'll cover off how to actually filter through all of that to find exactly what you're after. Another top tip is to add these folders. So any photos that you do find uh, that you think resonate with your brand and you'll most likely use in the future is to store those photos in a folder. And the reason why is that it'll be a lot easier to find them in the future, considering that there's millions and millions of different images and videos on Canva. But at the same time, we're once again going back to that consistency point that was made by the Daily Oz team. Being consistent with your brand, utilizing imagery that tends to be the same, but is slightly different, or uploading your own media into Canva and then storing that into folders so you can always reference it. And then use the filtering option. So this is really cool, but you can actually select the type of colors that are included in a photo and obviously select the orientation, whether it's an animated image, static, and then whether it falls under Free or Pro as well. And you can do this with images as well as our elements. And then finally, to further empower you to remain consistent with your branding, is the photo colors option within the color menu and i'll show you that very shortly as well but it's really cool because what it does it's a computer it looks at all the colors on the photo and it will select the top five most dominant colors in that particular photo that you can then utilize in your document you can see here that in this one there's shades of green in this particular image you would have been able to pull that in for the block that sits behind the text to make your text stand out tip number two video for social media, made easy and super speedy. Make it move. You've seen a whole bunch of different animations that we're utilizing in this presentation today, but video, animations, GIFs, stickers, they make social content that much more engaging as well, especially when we're talking about Instagram, so Instagram stories, reels, or an actual post that you can swipe through. Those animations make it that little bit more dynamic and draw your followers' eyes to that content. We have a whole bunch of stock videos for our pro and enterprise users, and there's stock videos that are available for our free users as well, but the library is far more extensive with pro and enterprise. And you can utilize different search functions that I'll show you very shortly as well. But definitely check out all our videos within the editor. And then we've got a whole bunch of templates available as well that you can rehash and make your own. So these templates are designed by designers and they're free for you to use and adjust as needed to suit your brand. Import your own videos. For example, if you're a news org, you're obviously out there filming in the field. You can 
video, upload it directly into Canva and then utilize that in a post. We see a lot of our social media individual contributors who like an influencer, for example, recording themselves and then dropping it into a Canva template and then posting to their social channel. And within the editor as well, you can now record yourself directly from the tool. So when you're on Canva, you can click record yourself and it will bring you up, which is really good for pitch decks. And I know we had a question about what a pitch deck is, but essentially it's a way of selling yourself, your business idea, or if you're in sales, you tend to use pitch decks when you're communicating your product to someone else. Obviously, when you present it live, it's really cool. But then when you are sending it across to the person that you've just presented to for future reference, or so they can share it with their colleagues or someone else, you can use that record yourself feature and talk through each slide as well. And I'll show you how to do that very quickly as well. Animate your slides. Click that animate button. There's a whole bunch of different animation options that you can select from, and you can animate your slide in one click. You can animate specific elements or the entire slide in general and use stickers. So I love stickers, I love GIFs, but it's a great way to call something out. And I'll show you how to do that in the demo that we'll be covering very soon. And tip number three, social media. It happens on mobile. So it's really important that when we're creating content, we're making it mobile friendly. We wanna start with the right templates. We wanna leverage the content that's already on Canva, but ensure that it's mobile friendly. The reason being, is that 99% of all social media activity is done on mobile phones, which is crazy when you think about it. So use templates that are created for Instagram or Facebook, those mobile first products. Optimize your design types or doc types for mobile. And you can do that by using the keyword mobile to bring up all the different templates we have available. Finally, this is tip number four. It's a special tip. Make your posts interactive. And that's what I'm gonna show you through now and i am conscious of time so i'm going to be super super speedy i'll bring up my canva account that you can all see here and quickly take you through the Canva for enterprise environment so this is why it might look a little bit different to the environment that you're on but that's the team i work with so with canva for enterprise you're able to upload multiple brand kits so you might have multiple divisions in your organization that all have slightly different brands, so different logo, or maybe they use a different font or color, and you can create multiple brand kits within Canva for Enterprise. And then finally, you can tack on different controls so that you can say that certain users can do certain things on Canva. The whole idea behind this is maintaining that brand integrity, that consistency across the board. Everyone interprets brands slightly differently, and that's very fair, but with Canva for Enterprise, you're able to lock down your brand and ensure that your users stay on brand and that they're adhering to your brand guidelines. So that's a key difference with Canva for Enterprise. But in this particular account I am in at the moment, I'm gonna go ahead and quickly show you how to create an interactive social post and then post it onto Instagram. So before I do that though, I just wanna show everyone that video beta. So if you type in video up the top, if you've never accessed it before, this will pop up. This is where it gets really cool and exciting. You have exclusive access to our open beta. So you just click try it for free. You can watch the little hype video as well. It's worthwhile watching because there's a whole bunch of cool stuff in there, but click try it for free. And this will really change your video experience on Canva. I might go in and drop in a video. So we'll drop in this one. Here and we can trim it down like that. And I might add a one more slide here. And if we click that little plus button down the bottom, we can add a transition, which was a hugely requested feature. We'll click dissolve, we can select the amount of seconds. And then if we hit play, we can see that transition come in, which is really cool. Another top requested feature that's available now as well is audio tracks per video. If you do voiceover, you can record multiple segments and drop them into each video. Very cool. Highly recommend that you guys try that out and jump on that beta. It's free for you to use, free for you to access, and I'm sure that you'll love all the new features that we do have available. One other thing that I want to show you is when we drop some text on top, 
we can animate our text. So we can choose the text that we'd like to animate and you can see that there's a whole bunch of different animations that are available just for text. And the same goes with elements as well. So the way to access it is to add the text or the element to the page and then click on that and then tap animate and it will come up with all the different options. So super exciting. Now, final stretch, I'm gonna talk really, really fast. We're gonna jump in and we're gonna create an Instagram post. So the way we do that is we click on create a design, Instagram, and remember I've already set up my brand kit. So I've got my colors, my logos, and my fonts in there. And I'm gonna click on Instagram story. Now, I like to think of myself as a budding designer. So I'm not gonna use any of the templates that are available, but remember you can search for templates on the left-hand side here and you can choose whatever template you'd like to use. You can narrow it down. So for example, if you run a food blog, you might type in food and all the different food options will show there. You can upload your own content into Canva as well. So your logos, any videos as well, as well as your own audio. And then you can actually record yourself as well. So here I am, no Zoom background, unfortunately, here. With photos, if we come here, we can narrow down our search results quite easily. So I am gonna do a travel blog. I wanna actually use a video. So I wanna show something that relates to flying. We can't fly at the moment and I'm desperate to go on a holiday. So I'm gonna type in flying, but we can see a whole bunch of content around flies is showing up. So what we might need to do is narrow that search down and we can do that by using the plus button like I have here. So the little plus, and then from here, I can type in plane and I wanna see an aeroplane, great. So we've got a couple of different options here. So first thing I'm gonna do is change the background color to one of my brand colors. I'm gonna to come to elements. I'm gonna use some shapes to create a border. Remember, if you click on file, show rulers and show guides, we can then drag in our guidelines as well to add in our margin. So I'm gonna grab that one, I'm gonna shrink it down a little. And I saw someone in the chat saying the little pink lines that show up is their favorite feature and it's actually my favorite feature as well. And so we'll go down and click that. I'm gonna turn that into white. And then I'm gonna add a rectangle in up the top. And feel free to do this at home as well. If you budding Canva user and you'd like to show off your design skills, start now and hopefully you can get it into the chat before we finish today. So i have pop this up the top here because that's where I want to drop my logo. So I'm going to come down to logos and my fake brand is called Concordia. And we'll drop that in here. That looks nice. And then with this, I'm going to pop some text in. So the text will be and we'll increase that text size. We'll make it white and then we'll come back to elements and we want to drop in a frame here. So uh, we come to frames, we quickly scroll through, find what we want. As you can see, I'm rushing now. Quickly click in videos and let's grab that nice aeroplane easily dragged in. I'm going to mute it and instead change that length to you know, four seconds. So remember in Instagram stories, 15 seconds. We'll then duplicate this page. Nice and easy. Tell us below. We'll delete that out. I'm going to decrease this font and I'm going to chuck in a couple of countries. So Australia, USA, we'll say India. I've always wanted to go to Antarctica and Canada. Cool. So we've got a couple of destinations here, which is great. I'm going to select them and then I'm going to click on position and let Canva do the work for me. Canva's going to tidy it up. Beautiful, so it's aligned them all nicely. And then from here, I might pop in a little, you know, animated arrow. So I'll type in arrow plus 
animated. I like that one. So this just makes it that little bit more dynamic. And you're probably going, Clayton, what's it pointing at? Wait one second, let me show you. I'll just make these a little bit bigger. Righty ho. What I'm going to do is switch screens to my phone and show you what it looks like. So I'm going to come up Brilliant. to story. I'm going to add that story in. Oh, you guys saw a picture of me and you saw my dog there as well. He's very cute. His name's Billy. So this is the first one. And we're going to click send to and share that to our story. So that's the static one with the video in it. We'll go back again and we'll add another story in. Here we go. And now we're asking them to tell us where their dream holiday is. So right now we've got a whole bunch of countries here. I'm going to come up to the top and click that. And I'm going to select this little poll. I'm not going to ask a question. Instead, what I'm going to do is change it from the love hard eyes to um, fly. There we go. That's the emoji I was after. We'll tap out of it. And what we'll do is we'll turn it into a scale. And then I'm going to send it to Instagram. And if we look at our story now, got a nice little video here. And we can see the video in the background as well. It's pretty cool. And then we're asking our followers um, to answer a question. So that there increases engagement. So that's the most common answer, but it gets your users using and engaging with your different posts and different content that you put on your Instagram story. So there's a whole bunch of other tips and tricks that we do have. And I highly recommend that you all follow Canva on Instagram because on a very regular basis, we're posting tips and tricks on our stories to keep them engaging. I'll quickly wrap up. Be consistent, post often, use imagery and video. If something works, keep doing it, experiment. And if you're running an experiment, run it for a decent amount of time so you can collect that data and then make an informed decision off it. Be creative, jump in it first, give it a crack. Resources, we have a whole bunch of different content available for you to access completely free. So canva.com forward slash canva dash space is a great place to start. Canva Design School is absolutely fantastic as well. And if you're on Facebook, join Canva Design Circle, where we have over 100,000 people, all like you, all avid Canva users, wanting to share their ideas, share their thoughts, share their content, and you'll definitely be able to find like-minded people within that group. So my friends, it has been absolutely fantastic speaking to you. I hope everyone's walked away with a little bit more knowledge, tips and tricks, and a big shout out to the Daily Oz as well for lending us their time in that interview. And a big shout out to all of you for being such a fantastic audience. Thank you, Clayton, for providing all of this Canva goodness and all of these insights for our audience. We hope you will all join us again for another Canva Space session very soon.